Hey, welcome to uh, a video one tutorial on trial and improvement. Please see uh, my explanation video of what I expect you to do with these set of um, videos. But in essence, as always, in the video tutorial, I would like you to make a revision card based on what I talk through that you can refer to. And then straight away afterwards, go to the accompanying video um, which has the past exam questions and you try those and then I go through the answers there. So in this video I'm going to show you a tutorial on trial improvement, make a revision card, then move straight on to the past paper questions, um, the, the accompanying video. Okay, let's go straight into this. Trial improvement. Now this topic is actually a grade C topic but it comes up in the higher paper so if it does come up you've got to get this one right. It's a nice easy source of marks, usually four marks. The questions are usually find the solution to one decimal place to the following equation using trial and improvement. Okay, what is trial and improvement? Trial and improvement is where you make a guess for your x, okay, and you try and work out what x cubed minus 4x is, see how close it is to 10. Based on that guess, you try and improve your guess, and, and that's what, where the improvement side of things come on. You keep going along until you get an answer for x that's correct to one decimal place. There's a very formulaic way of doing this, which I'll show you. You do this each time. The first thing you always do, and uh, uh, usually the question actually draws a table for you, but if not, you draw yourself a table. In this column, it's your x value. In this column, it's your value that you get when you work out um, x cubed minus 4x. And in the third column, it's a comment column, where you talk about too high or too low. Okay, step one, I do not never start straight with decimal guesses. You always have to start in the same way. So step one, you need to find two consecutive whole numbers, that's whole numbers after each other, like three and, three and four or 11 and 12. So find two consecutive whole numbers, okay, where one's too big, one has to be too big and the other is too small. Okay, let's try and do this. Let's choose x is, let's say, 2 here. If I chose x is 2, then I'll work out what this is. This is 2 cubed minus 4 times 2, which is 0. And that is clearly less than 10, so small, too small. Okay, don't jump to a bigger number now. Go for consecutive numbers. Try x is 3 here. If you tried that, you would get 3 cubed minus 4 times 3, and that's 27, take away uh, 12, which is 15, and that's too big. So we've done step 1. The consecutive numbers are 2 and 3. At that stage, now you start, you find 2... Consecutives are an unusual word, but two uh, numbers to 1dp, to 1dp, where they're too big, too small. Same thing. And consecutive in the sense that, say you pick 8.1 and 8.2. You do not jump to uh, 2dps here or anything like that. You go to 1dp now. Now, if you look at this, um, it seems to me that x is going to be closer to 3 than it is to 2 because when you put in 3 you get back 15. So I'm going to try 2.7. So on my calculator I'm going to work out 2.7 cubed take away 4 times 2.7. And when I do that I get about 8.9 which is small. Okay so 3 is too big, 2.7 is too small. I'll have to uh, go a bit higher. Let's try 2.8 now. If I do 2.8 cubed minus 4 times 2.8, I get myself uh, about 10.8. 10.8, which is too big. And I've done step two. These are like consecutive decim decimals to 1dp, and one's too uh, small and one's too big. Okay, I'm nearly there now with the answer, but I must always do the following thing. 
I think to myself, I have tried 2.7 and my answer was small. I have tried 2.8 and my answer was big. To double check which of these it's closer to, because I only want my answer to 1dp, I need to check the number in between, which is 2.75. So I must always do this check. There's always a mark for this. So I work out 2.75 cubed minus 4 times 2.75. and I get 9.8, about 9.8, which again is small. So at 2.75 it's small. So I draw myself a little picture like that. That makes it as clear as day to me that if 2.7 is too small and 2.75 is too small, the answer must be slightly closer to 2.8. So the answer to one decimal place is x equals 2.8 to one decimal place. Okay, so you always do it in this way. Draw yourself a table, find two consecutive numbers where one's too big, one's too small. Then and only then, go to one decimal place. Find two consecutive numbers to one decimal place where one's too big, one's too small. And then check the number halfway in between. Draw yourself a little diagram so you know what's going on. And then state your answer um, to one decimal place as clearly as possible. Okay, I've got you... Uh, an example to do for yourself here. Try this example, and uh, I'll pause the video. I'll pause talking. Then you can check your answer, see if you got it right, uh, and afterwards move straight on to the exam questions and try and work through those. Here you go. Here is the question I would like you to try. And here is the answer to that question. Check you got it right and check you did all the workings as I suggested you do in the previous tutorial. Here's the answer. And the answer was x is equal to 1.9 to one decimal place. And here are my workings. Okay, thank you very much for listening to this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and you got yourself a revision card out of this. Now it's time to move on to the trial improvement exam question video where you try each question based on what we've just learned now, see if you get the right answer, um, and I'll work through those solutions as well. Okay, thank you very much, and move on now to the exam paper questions.